Hello, I am Pirinada. Welcome to Raptor Talk. Today we're speaking with Najib Sunarimbo, who is the Interior Minister of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. And we're speaking with him on the occasion of the second year anniversary of the Bangsamoro Organic Law, which created the Bangsamoro Region. Now, the BTA is the Bangsamoro Transition Authority, and it's the interim government in charge of transitioning this new region. Uh, and um, the transition period ends on June 30, 2022, which means that the BTA has only one year and five months left to do the essential work. So let's listen to Najib Sunarimbo talk about the challenges that confront the region and what the Bangsamoro people can expect in the years to come. Um, so thank you, uh, Minister Najib, for joining us today. Uh, first question, it's been a year since the Bangsamoro Organic Law was ratified. What's the mood like now in the Bangsamoro Transition Authority? In the Bangsamoro Transition Authority, there's a lot of catching up. Uh, essentially because the COVID affected the implementation timeline for some of the provisions of the organic law and the implementation of the major programs of the different ministries. Um, we've also suffered from the COVID uh, in the hiring process because you can just imagine the applicants for the jobs portal reach over 300,000 for 4,000 uh, available positions. If uh, you do an interview for each of the applicants, numbering over 300,000, you, you spend 10 to five, five minutes to 10 minutes, you can just imagine how much um, uh, time you would need to do that. Uh, and you cannot also bring them together in one room because that's no longer available because of the uh, challenges posed by COVID. So a lot of the timelines that we've set uh, have been um, uh, essentially not, not within the reach of the Bangsamoro government. So suddenly, we have a lot of catching up to do. So that's the mood for, uh, for, for now. So mm -hmm. there's a sense of pressure on the BTA's part. There's kind of a, a feeling of uh, we have a deadline to reach and it's an imminent thing that we have to speed things up, especially with the pandemic. Yes, and, and on several areas, like in the area of legislation, we need to complete the basic uh, codes that need to be passed. Uh, under the organic law, there are six. Of the six, one has been passed, three are pending in the parliament, uh, two are to be filed now with the, with the committee of the cabinet. But we intend to submit that within the first quarter of this year. So in, in essence, the essential legislation can actually be completed within the first quarter of the year. Uh, but some of the institution building that we need to do together with the national government is taking some time because national mm -hmm. government also is affected by COVID also affected by COVID. So a lot of things that needs to be moved have been affected. Uh, so like we cannot meet physically. So it's, it's difficult to discuss, for instance, arrangement for ultimately transferring the power of collecting taxes from national government to the Bank Zamoro government, um, because it will have implications also in terms of the fiscal position of government. Uh, and given the meron tayong COVID, where hirap po mangulekta ng taxes dahil a lot of businesses are affected, pagka dinisturb pa ho natin yung uh, collection of taxes, baka ho lalong maghirap yung gobyerno. So understandable naman po yun. In the area of normalization, very serious yung effect ng COVID rito uh, at hindi masyado nagpo-proceed yung programs for normalization. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned taxes, no? So does this mean that yung BTA hindi pa siya nagpapato ng buwis right now within the territory? Hindi pa ho. Ang provision in the organic law is that all taxes, national and regional taxes, will be collected by the Bank Samoro Revenue Office, no longer by the Bureau of Internal Revenue. Uh, but that one needs to be discussed with the Bureau of, uh, or the Department of Finance uh, through the Bureau of Internal Revenue. Uh, and this will have to be taken up 
in the IGRB. Uh, we've not tabled the discussion for this one. Uh, marami pa hong ibang issues na dinidiscuss sa IGRB like yung transfer ng uh, offices in Cotabato City, uh, national offices to the Bangsamoro government. Hindi pa ho nakukomplete din yan. Uh, so ito yung mga areas na medyo nagtitake ng time. So hindi ho, uh, from our calculation, hindi ho talaga ito matatapos by 2022. Okay. And uh, you mentioned that uh, you've had to adjust to the pandemic. Kamo sa yung adjustment ng BTA um, in terms of trying to push through with certain meetings, with certain very important discussions despite the pandemic. I mean, here in Metro Manila and other places, um, mga online conferences has become sort of a, um, a default way of coping. Is this something that's working for the BTA? I mean, do you do things also via online? And is it helping with the transition? Y yes. So you see, in the original rules uh, passed by the parliament, the session will have to be uh, done by, by physical meeting. Uh, the, the members of the parliament will have to be physically present, but that's no longer possible. So they've made adjustments in the rules of the parliament, allowing for uh, sessions to be held by uh, online. Uh, there are also mixed meetings now being done for those who are physically present and where the venue would allow for some people to meet uh, and then uh, others would have to join uh, via online. So may mga adjustments na, you know, in the ministries also. Like in my ministry, uh, the, the technical assistance being given to local government units in the form of assistance for training them on legislation, on development planning, are now being delivered to uh, online uh, platform. So, ito na ho yung nagiging mode rin dito. But we will have to admit that in some areas of the Bangsamoro, the internet uh, connection is very poor. So, hirap din ho tayo na uh, ayusin yon para ho dumating yung servicios sa kanila. Hmm. Okay. And yung meetings of things like the IGRB, do they also take place online or hindi masyado? We've met only once physically. All the rest have all been online. So uh, as of December, yung last meeting namin, online pa rin. Hmm. Okay. So alam naman natin na may pandemic, it's affected your plans. But uh, nonetheless, you've still managed to accomplish um, certain things that the BOL said the BTA should accomplish. Um, for you being um, a member of the cabinet and also a member of several intergovernmental relations bodies, uh, ano for you yung three or first top of your head major accomplishments that the BT has done so far? Three things essentially. One is to really operationalize the fiscal autonomy provision of the organic law. Uh, as of today, the funds, the budget, and the targeting is essentially done by the Bangsamoro government. So unlike before where we will have to lobby for a budget in Congress, now it's being determined by the Bangsamoro government through the Ministry of Finance, Budget and Management and the Parliament as the, as the body that legislates the budget. Um, that's the first major accomplishment where determination of priorities is now really undertaken by the Bangsamoro government, no longer by the National Congress. Second major accomplishment is that we've set already the bureaucracy that is more attuned to the system of a parliamentary government. So we've shifted away from the former system where um, the, the ministries or the bureaucracy in the region is in a sense still an extension of the national bureaucracy. This time around, we've set a bureaucracy that is really controlled by the Bank Tomorrow through the Bank Tomorrow Parliament and led by the chief minister. Second is uh, the third is that we've made progress in implementing a new system uh, for generating priorities for projects uh, and development in the region through an identification where we engage stakeholders, including local government units. So the priorities of the region is now determined not by anybody else, but essentially by the parliament. Uh, by the ministries and the local government unit, as well as the constituents of the region. 
if this continues, we will be able to bring together uh, the development direction of the local government units and the region uh, in the same uh, plane. So the same who magko converge na tayo. Unlike before, where the the priorities of the region was determined by Congress and to a certain extent by the departments of the national government, while the priorities of the local government units as an autonomous entity are essentially determined by themselves. So wala hong point of convergence. Sa ngayon ay meron na. So we are helping local government units, halimbawa, determine their challenges. And some of these challenges are being addressed by the region. Like many of the priorities identified by the local government units are roads. So a major component of the budget now uh, pertains to construction of local roads. Some of the local government units do not have municipal buildings. We're currently addressing that. So we have eight. Uh, I will be able to complete the completion, the construction of the eight municipal building to ensure na yung mga tao in the municipalities would know where to seek assistance and get government service. So ito ho ay uh, attempt really to converge yung direction in terms of development ng LGU at saka ng regional government. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned funding, no? And uh, one thing that we saw also um, in the year that has passed was yung, uh, yung pag-release ng special uh, ng, uh, block grant to the BTA. So uh, we also know that the BTA asked for an extension of the validity of the one half of this. So para mga 30 billion of the uh, block grant was unspent. And um, yung question here now, it raises concerns about absorptive capacity. You know, that the fact that you you had to extend the validity of this much of the block grant shows that maybe hindi kaya mag implement ng projects. How is the BTA addressing concerns on absorptive capacity? Yung absorptive capacity, essentially two things ang nag-contribute noon. One is that we are still in the process of hiring people to man the bureaucracy. So nagkasabay ho yung program implementation at saka yung hiring. And understandable na wala kang tao dun sa baba, kukonti pa lang, skeletal, hindi nila kaya implement fully yung mga programs funded for 2020. The second one is that many of these programs would need physical validation by our people. So like in my ministry, there is a project for solid waste management in Bongao, in Tawi-Tawi. We've talked about that, we've discussed it with the mayor, but we need to physically inspect the site para mag-comply ho talaga tayo dun sa requirements. Is it, um, is it affecting uh, river system in Bongao? Is it close to communities? Uh, how do we manage those things? Kailangan nung may site inspection. Because of the lockdown and the difficulty of travel, hindi ho talaga namin mapupuntahan yun. So we cannot implement immediately the project uh, dahil meron tayong kulang dun sa process. Uh, most of this is the inability of our people to get to the ground and do the actual site inspection. Okay, so you mentioned that your hiring process has been a sort of challenge for you and it's also it, keeping you from implementing projects. So uh, how is the BTA working around this problem? I heard yung job portal nyo nga, as, said, as you said, 300,000 yung nag-apply, pero a very small percentage ended up getting hired officially because nga, you know, you have to interview them, etc. So Paneto, how do you um, start bringing people in? We've, we've act, essentially, may, many of the ministries have divided their team, or team nila in the regional uh, office. A part of the team addresses the personnel uh, uh, selection, uh, including hiring of personnel. The other team are focused on the technical issues of implementing the program. Uh, kaya ho, karamihan ngayon, na hire yung mga tao towards the end of the year, last year. So somewhere November, uh, December, medyo marami na ho. Roughly mga nasa 70% na ho tayo nung hiring. Uh, so, so kaya na ho nung bureaucracy natin na uh, gumalaw ng mabilis. Um, so yung po ang naging uh, process. So, sa hiring naman, sa interview, ang naging resolution is to do uh, the interview online. Uh, mm -hmm. hindi na ho physically pinapunta yung mga applicants. 
But may alam natin na may mga challenges like if you're an applicant from the island provinces of Tawi-Tawi or one of the very remote municipalities in the islands of Sulu, wala ho kayong internet connection, you will be deprived of the opportunity to get interviewed and be hired. So alam ho namin na may mga trade-off yung naging process. But we will try to address that in the coming months para naman ho equal pa rin yung opportunities for all. Okay. Uh, so, nabagit na earlier yung uh, need for extension and the BTA has already called uh, for uh, a bill to amend the BOL. And so, parang kumbaga, you're, you're, you're trying to get this um, passed on the national government level um, for another three-year extension, for a three-year extension until 2025. Uh, what's the backup plan though if this doesn't happen? We so, so is internally for the MI left. Meron naman ho talagang nakaredi na political party. Uh, mm-hmm. As early as 2014, I was asked to lead the team uh, that will register the political party of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. This is the United Bangsamoro Justice Party. Nakaregister na rin ho yun sa Comelec. I think we are the biggest party in terms of actual membership. Uh, we've reached over 100,000 members already. And very important, we have over 40,000 members who are female. So almost half of the political party members of the United Bangsamoro Justice Party are women. Um, so in terms of number, kaya ho na uh, immobilize yung political party na uh, in, in the event wala hong uh, postponement ng election, we can we can we can buy for election uh, in the Bangsamoro. Ang challenge lang ho talaga namin doon is that if we push for election, one, it will distract the focus of the regional government from service delivery, completing the uh, peace agreement, ensuring that we implement all the provisions of the organic law, into now winning elections. Uh, sa amin, no, personally, ayaw namin mangyari yun. Kasi the focus should really be bringing about um, implementi- implementation of the peace agreement that right down to the benefit of the constituents. Pag nagsimula hong maging politikan na ito, baka ho yung focus namin ay hindi na doon sa pagserbisyo sa tao, kundi doon sa pagpanalo ng uh, eleksyon. Uh, this will also complicate the local elections in the region because now we will be forced to field candidates in the local elections. Ang position ho naman talaga ng MILF is that we did not negotiate for an agreement that will create a political entity uh, only to end up running for local elections. Because the local election, local elective position have been available for the longest time for anyone, including members of the MILF. But we never opted to run for local elections. Our focus has always been creating the political entity at the regional level that will lead the transformation of this region. Yun po yung isang misgivings ng MILF doon sa uh, elections. Okay. Um, and kung matul- matuloy man yung, um, yung extension, I'm sure even the congressmen here dun sa Congress ng national government, they will be asking you for a plan, right? If we give you a three-year extension, what will be in that plan? Ano yung mangyayari sa first year and second year and third year? So um, so right now, uh, have you thought, for example, of things like um, leadership change? Like in the next, in the additional three years, will we, can we still expect Chief Minister Murad to be the leader or will there be a change in that? May, may, may major naman po na milestones na talagang sinusundan yung MILF and in, in, in a sense, yung government of the day. One really is building a strong institution for autonomy uh, in the region. And this is uh, at the policy level achieved through legislation. Second, as these legislations will have to be carried out by the bureaucracy. The bureaucracy should be so designed as to take in people who can deliver the mandate. You know, yung hinahabol natin. Now, also, if we move yung 
political track, uh, like we have the, the bureaucracy running, we have the policing provision of the organic law implemented, it will trigger action at the normalization side. So side by side with the progress in the political uh, uh, track would be the normalization track. So ang habol talaga namin is that under the peace agreement, the third phase of the commissioning, which would require us to decommission 35%, is triggered by the establishment and the operationalization of policing in the Bank of mm-hmm. We are still discussing the guidelines on that. We have not yet uh, completed that. So if the government, um, and the current government is not able to complete that, we will leave behind a very substantial number of combatants who will not be decommissioned uh, before mm-hmm. 2022. Kasi na decommission lang ho natin 30%. Of the 40,000, you can just imagine the number of combatants that are yet to be decommissioned. Of the 12,000 who are decommissioned, ang na deliver palang ng national government is the cash uh, component, 10% of the agreed component for these combatants, uh, which is supposed to contain socioeconomic development, scholarship for their kids, um, livelihood for their family. Uh, and uh, housing for for these combatants. You know, hindi pa na deliver ng government yun. We we barely scratched the surface in transforming the major camps of the MILF. Mm-hmm. All of us would have wanted to see MILF camps now becoming very productive, progressive communities, and not merely uh, in 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 a way military camps of the, the MILF. But that's not happening as yet. So. You know, kung uh, tuloy-tuloy uh, up to another three years, ma-achieve po natin yon because we can combine the resources of the regional government and supposedly the normalization trust fund that is supposed to be utilized for transforming the camps. Uh, also, we are looking at major infrastructure projects now uh, that would bring about yung integration of the regional economy because Ang peculiar na geography ng region natin, dalawang mainland provinces, dal- tatlong island provinces. The mm-hmm. island provinces are not connected to the mainland economically. It's connected to Zamboanga Peninsula. If we are to have really um, 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 a regional economy that, that, that is working as one, we will have to integrate that. So kaya ho may, may move uh, and this is supported by a funding to create the connectivity between the island and the, the islands and the mainland, which would facilitate the exchange of goods, services, and the free movement of our people, bypassing the uh, malayo na rota that goes all the way to the Sambuanga Peninsula. These things would take time. Oh. Hindi natin kayang uh, gawin kaagad in the remaining period of just over a year. Uh, so, yun ho talaga ang challenge natin for now. Mm-hmm. And will the Chief Minister still be willing to lead the BTA in the three years na 2022 to 2025? Or baka mag-iba that <laughs> That's what we are asking him to do. But internally mm-hmm. in the MILF, and I have uh, several conversations already with the Chief Minister, uh, they're currently reviewing yung placement ho ng mga tao nila. Admittedly, meron ho talagang mga tao yung MILF na misplaced doon sa positions. And, and the instruction from the Chief Minister, when I reviewed the provision of the proposed amendment uh, to the organic law that would go for an extension, yes, mm-hmm. very specific instruction to me to allow for changes in the membership of the BTA which would allow us to review the performance of our uh, people in the BTA and in the cabinet so that we can place people who are more appropriate uh, for some of the positions in the region. Could you refresh us, um, yung, uh, you refresh our memories na in the BUL, any of the provisions there about qualifications which um, Chief Minister wants changed? Yung pong, essentially, yung qualification naman, okay lang po yun. But yung mga tao na nag-occupy ng position ang meron tayong uh, ongoing na review. Kasi 
obviously, mga ibahong uh, nalagay sa ibang position ay hindi ho sila angkop doon. Mas angkop sila sa ibang position. Now, if we extend the period of transition, we will just extend the transition period, not necessarily the term of the incumbent officials. To make sure, the chief minister would have a free hand to select new people to fill in new pos the, the positions available in the BTA. Ah, okay. So you're saying that um, you don't want anything changed in the BOL aside from the date of elections? Yes. Uh, okay. So and essentially, the provisions there will stay. But if we extend the period of transition, in a sense, mm -hmm. uh, we will also be extending the people in the BTA. But the chief minister wants some leeway to change and reorganize the the membership in the BTA and the bureaucracy. So that's what what he's asking us to do. Uh, that's what is reflected in the proposal that we submitted to uh, Congress. Mm -hmm. So uh, the proposal is to add what provision to the BUL with regards to the membership of the BTA? So we, we will just protect the, the provision that says majority of the members of the BTA would still be MILF because ah. this is an MILF-led government. Notwithstanding this provision, uh, we will empower the chief minister to recommend to the president membership in the BTA for the slots of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. This way, he may, he may decide not to extend the term of all of the current members of the BTA 41, which is the majority. Mm -hmm. He might change some of the persons in the BTA uh, with mm -hmm. people who are more um who are in a better position to do the the legislation uh part mm -hmm. okay i see uh so you just passed the barn budget for 2021 no? we're now looking into um the coming year the coming year the second year of the bol uh the, the bta so what can the people of the bounce tomorrow expect to happen this year given this budget there's uh what the people can expect is that services will now go down to the level of the villages, the barangays. Currently, the structure of the bureaucracy is that we are only up to the municipal level. So like my ministry, I only have people up to the municipal level, the municipal local government operations officers. The Ministry of Health also is only up to the level of the municipality, the municipal health officer. Under the 2021 budget, we will extend the services by appointing health officers at the level of the villages of the barangays. These health officers would bring in not just their presence there, but also medicines. So we funded a lot of, of that. For uh, education, we have funded the, the education ministry with the highest allocation for this year. So they will receive 23 billion of the 75 billion. Uh, there's also a major emphasis on funding social services. So like the Ministry of Social Services and Development, uh, Ministry of Health, and the allied uh, ministries uh, that are delivering uh, essential services to the communities. Apart from that, there is a huge budget for infrastructure targeting barangay roads and uh, community infrastructure at the level of the villages. The reason for that is we need um, a government that is felt by the people. So panawagan ho ni Chief Minister ay yung gobyernong ramdam ng mamamayan. Uh, because if we continue the tradition of government uh, in the region where services are available only at the level of the municipality, in reality po, yung municipality is already an, an, a consolidation uh, of the different villages. Uh, yung tunay na mukha ng kahirapan, yung tunay na mukha ng kawalan ng oportunidad sa buhay, o ng kawalan ng edukasyon, nasa level ho yun ng uh, barangay. Uh, you don't see the actual faces of people at the level of the municipality. You see the faces of poverty, uh, deprivation, injustice, 
at the level of the villages. So yun ho ang magiging target ng 2021 naman. Yung funding for 2021, may portion ba, ni, ba nito na uh, will go to the normalization process? I mean, we know that national government has made commitments, but as you as you mentioned, parang only 100,000 per competent na cash yung nabigyan sa decommissioned competence as of now, um, when the entire benefit package is 1 million per competent. So um, do the funds also go to these uh, decommissioned competence? Yes, po. but essentially, ang naging design for 2020 and 2021 is that yung mga combatants na naghihintay ng decommissioning period, uh, magiging focus yan ng intervention ng regional government. Kasi hindi ho sasagutin ng national government yung mga combatants na hindi pa natidecommission. But our challenge is that if we do not address the needs of these combatants, they might be recruited by some other group. So kailangan ho nating alagaan yan sila. So just today, the Chief Minister actually launched a program. We call it uh, Salam Bang Samoro. This will address 10,000 combatants of the MILF. Uh, in a way, merong cash assistance sa kanila, condition mm -hmm. on three things. One is that they're willing to undertake peace education uh, to prepare them to transition. Second is that they will do community service. Para ho yung time nila will now be spent to serving communities rather than holding on to their firearms. The third mm -hmm. condition is that they will undertake skills development so that when they develop the skills, it is easy to bring them into, um, in, in, into the community where they can have livelihood packages, where they can avail of some other government interventions to improve their uh, uh, socio-economic condition. So this will now focus on combatants of the MILF na hindi pa ho na didecommission para ho nakikip lang ho natin sila. Okay. All right. Uh, now, just moving on further dun sa transition aspect. Uh, we know that yung work of transition, hindi lang siya trabaho ng BTA, but it's also a national government concern and very involved dapat actually national government dito. So what has it been like to work with them? Do you feel that they are responding quickly enough to the needs and concerns of the BTA? There is a lot of room for improvement as far as national government is concerned. Um, merong sincerity sa part ng mga workers nila, pero there are major challenges confronted by national government. Uh, an example is that in the design for the funding for normalization, yung pong national departments ang magdi-deliver nito. But you will have to understand that many of the camps and of the combatants of the MILF are located in the regional uh, territory. Wala hong opisina rito yung mga national departments. So like if you wanna deliver agriculture inputs to the combatants of the MILF in the camp in Abubakar, uh, for instance, in the boundaries of Maguindanao and Lanao del Sur, walang provincial office dito si Department of Agriculture. They will have to borrow their people from Region 12, which is located in another region in Coronadal, or bring the people from Region 10, which is in Cagayan de Oro. So isang major challenge ho nila yun. Uh, mm -hmm. If that continues, magiging problema ho talaga nila yung tao na magdi-deliver ng services. Second is that yung many of these, uh, these camps and these combatants, yung pong funding requirement nila ay malaki. At the rate government is allocating the funds uh, sa mga agencies nila, hindi ho sufficient yun. The third one is that there is no single entity in the national government that is large both with mandate and the resources to deliver on government commitments for normalization. Nakakalat ho yan sa iba ibang department. So pag siningil ho namin sa OPAP kay Secretary Galvez, we cannot pressure Secretary Galvez because Secretary Galvez would need to negotiate with the other secretaries kung saan nakalatch ho yung pera for normalization. So Kasama ho yun sa mga challenges na naiintindihan namin na kailangan nung i-address nung national government. Hmm. Okay, so um, like for example, yun nga yung, yung funds for normalization, do you wish that uh, may allocation talaga yung normalization, hindi lang siya parang kung ano mang budget yung meron yung isang national government agency? Yes, uh, 
really, if if we wanna deliver quickly and achieve yung impact desired for this program, dapat isa lang huyan, single entity ang may hawak niyan with the mandate and the resources combined para ho, hindi sila mahirapan na isynchronize pakiusapan yung mga iba-ibang ministries and that in the annual allocation dapat nung national government dapat factored in na kung magkano talaga yung uh, the 40,000 combatants at the major camps of the MILF for it to be transformed dapat to computed na yon but as 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 of today hindi pa ho nangyayari yon did you have to uh, resort to the IGRB anytime nung uh, the past year for any grievances or concerns of the BTA. I mean, na activate ba to? I mean, we know you've you've met, right? It's to discuss mga interrelational issues, but it's also for resolving problems and kumaga parang um concerns and grievances on your part with the national government. So, did you ever use this mechanism for that? Yes, I I uh, I, I think the IGRB has been very very effective in one ventilating the issues, sharpening it and allowing government to call the attention of certain departments and officials of the national government na hindi pa nagko-comply noon the provisions ng uh, organic law like uh, late last year um, we've been taking na yung transfer of the offices uh, in of the national government located now in the territory of the Bangsamoro government should already happen because the call of the Organic law is that the transfer should happen within six months. If we are now over a year, hindi pa na transfer. So nung kinunbihin yung IGRP at the decide on, medyo bumilis po yung pace nung transfer. Okay, okay. And would you would you have heard also of uh, the president himself, President Duterte, checking on the, the BTA every now and then? Yes, may mga... Reports, for instance, in I think a couple of meetings that we attended in Malacanang, uh, may mga issues na niraise sa amin si Presidente. Uh, some of these issues were actually discussed at the IGRB, but I think hindi lang na transmit sa kanya kagad. Uh, but we made certain clarifications there. Meron din kami mga issue na hindi na resolve at the level of the IGRB na napag-usapan naman po sa kanya. Okay. Um, could you just give us an idea of what these issues are and that you had to bring directly to the president's attention? Like in the second meeting of the IGRB where the president was present, we brought the issue of the desire of the Bank Tomorrow government to help in the rehabilitation of Marawi City. Uh, so napag-usapan ho yun. And that allowed us to allocate some funds from the Black Grant for the work to rehabilitate uh, Marawi City. But ang, ang position ho ni Presidente, yung rehabilitation would still be led by the task force Bangon Marawi. So yun ho yung kasama. Another issue that was raised to him was the issue of the process at saka yung sharing for the exploitation, development, and utilization of oil, gas, um, and, and some other energy resources. Uh, which is under the organic law. Okay. And um, uh, we know that he supports yung extension call ninyo. Were you able to talk to him about it as a BTA? Yeah, there was a meeting in uh, Davao last November, uh, last week of November, um, where it was the president actually who opened up uh, just before the chief minister can actually uh, talk, he said, uh, I understand that we will need to extend uh, a transition period in the Bank Samoro because from the reports I'm getting uh, from the Secretary of OPAP, it would appear that we will not be able to complete the essential work in the transition period. So that started the discussion about how do we uh, ensure that we complete the task uh, and, and the agreement is that we will extend the period of transition. He was, of course, very candid in saying that the extension of the transition period is not within the executive department. We will have to um, um, make an amendment to the organic law and that the amendment will have to be done by Congress. But he committed 
to exert his uh, influence uh, to allow Congress to quickly pass the amendatory law. Hmm. Okay. And then um, last few questions na lang siguro would be about how the BTA is also working with local governments. Because we know, for example, that um, si Cotabato City Mayor Sintigiani, for one, opposed joining the BARM from the very start. So um, has this affected the transition? In the case of Cotabato City, the provision of the organic law is that the inclusion of the city is effective upon the ratification uh, by the people. Uh, so when Cotabato City voted yes, automatically Cotabato City is now part of the region. The only challenge was that the mayor uh, was resisting the transfer uh, in, in, in a way of Cotabato City to the region. And, and she continued to lobby to become member of the councils in Region 12, uh, which is a different region. Uh, but finally, last year, uh, the president already decided and tasked the uh, secretary of DILG to transfer Cotabato City. So effectively, na transfer na rin ho yung uh, Cotabato City. May mga kaakibat lang siya na... Um, uh, bureaucratic processes that we will have to execute, like the police force in the, the city police in Cotabato, uh, administratively and financially is still managed by Region 12, although operations control is already with the region. So this one will have to be uh, settled immediately. Para ho isa na lang talaga yung kung saan nagre-report yung PNP in uh, Cotabato City. So this one also uh, delayed the implementation of some programs in Cotabato City. Like in the 2021 budget process, Cotabato City did not join the discussion, the planning session for prioritizing the infrastructure for the different components of the region. So nangyari, walang specific project proposal for road construction in Cotabato City. Ang ginawa na lang ng Ministry of Public Works is to allocate a lump sum of 370 million for road construction in Cotabato City. But because of that, the implementation of the program will have to be will be delayed. Kasi ngayon pa lang tayo mag-identify na year. Supposedly kung in-identify na yan last year, execution na lang ho yung natitira for 2020. Now, we will have to go back to identification again before we can submit the list uh, for purposes of releasing the funds from the Ministry of Finance, Budget, and Management of the region. So it seems that may concrete effect talaga yung um, itong hesitancy or maybe uh, just unwillingness to participate in certain processes, especially on the part of the city mayor. Uh, is there a way to, um, are, are you working on a way to, for this to prevent this kind of backlog or this kind of difficulty especially as we enter into the second year? Yes, we, we've actually invited her to take part in the different councils and committees of the regional government, like the BEDSI or the Bangsamoro Economic Development Council. This is the highest council that determines the development priorities of the region before it is passed on to the, on to the parliament. Yung interagency task force for against COVID-19 also is the one that draws the policy for the region. Nagkakaiba ho nung polisiya yung uh, Cotabato City because it, it continued to be part of Region 12 in the IATF. Samantalang nasa gitna siya ng Maguindanao. So meron silang lockdown on Sunday. In the rest of the region, wala nang lockdown. And if you have to traverse yung Maguindanao, in between lies Cotabato City. So kung may lockdown siya, hindi makakatawid yung from the north of Maguindanao going to the south of Maguindanao. So ito will have to be resolved now. Kasi ho, nakaka-apekto siya doon sa integration ng development policy ng, ng region. So ito ho, kailangan ma-address na. Mayor Bumfier in the BTA that amending the BOL for extending the BTA might lead to other amendments by congressmen. And how do we guard against this? Meron tendency, but so far, the five bills that have been uh, filed in Congress, alos pare-pareho naman. Ho. Wala ho talaga silang ginalaw except the period of election. Mm, okay. So wala namang any 
anything you hear from your end of people trying to change any other section? There's there's one from Congressman Kali Dimoporo, uh, mm -hmm. which is a tricky provision that says uh, the funding for normalization will have to be charged against the black grant of the Bank Samoro government, uh, which which is not uh, which is not proper, because the normalization uh, track and the commitment of the government is that they will fund that from the very beginning. It's in the peace agreement. If we charge the normalization track into the Bank Samoro Black Grant, it will substantially reduce the amount that the Bank Samoro government is supposed to use for development programs and for running the bureaucracy. Last question would be, uh, moving forward, we are now uh, past the one year anniversary of the BOL in the next coming days. And of course, the people of Bank Samoro are having a lot of expectations about the BPA and its promise to deliver. So what can what are the next immediate steps that the BPA will take to make this happen? So we've, we've really tasked certain ministries that are into social service delivery to ensure that we bring the services down to the people. Uh, the little complication that we are having with this one is that the local chief executives uh, are demanding that we course through them the delivery of these services. If we do that, it will delay and add a layer to the service delivery. Uh, this is also triggering some suspicion among local chief executives that the Bank Samoro government is trying to undermine them, which is not really the intention. The intention is to be true to the promise of the chief minister that this government will pursue programs that will address the essential needs of the people. Yung pong ramdam ng mga mamamayan yung gobyerno nila. Um, and, and this perception by local chief executives, some of them, like Sakurtan, is affecting the relationship between the regional government and the province of Sulu. Uh, hindi naman po talaga intention na uh, i-undermine yung mga local government units. But our 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 analysis is that we cannot go through the different layers of government because it will delay the program implementation. Second, meron din tayo yung hindi masyado magandang experience for some LPUs. But hindi naman po lahat. Meron din namang mga LPUs na talagang magagaling. Uh, na yung service delivery nila multiplies the impact of the services being delivered by the regional government. So ito ho, Inaayos lang namin sa ngayon. So my my ministry is into the in, into this uh, um, into resolving this uh, potential clash between LGU and the regional government. So we are assisting local government units in their planning process to integrate yung development plan nila into the development plan of the region. So that together we determine the priorities of the region and of the LGU and that we complement the resources of the region. Kasi meron naman po silang internal revenue allocation. If ginamit nila yung uh, ira nila at minats natin sa regional black grant, mas bibili so yung pace ng development sa region. And we know na si Sakuritan was one of those who opposed um, Sulu joining BARM. Um, but I guess yung argument that some quarters can make with yung LGUs being, you know, it was it would be coursed through them, is um, paano naman yung um, manpower ng regional government, ng BPA, do you have enough to be able to do this, what you want to do, na bring social services straight to the people and not go through the LGUs anymore? Yes, we have, yung mga ministries natin, may tao sila up to the level of the municipality. So may provincial offices tayo, meron tayo mga municipal offices. So we can actually deliver the services. Uh, like yung, for now, yung relief distribution during the pandemic, we've undertaken the, the biggest relief operation. I, I think you can compare it with any other region. And we've utilized several mechanisms for delivering this. Yung mga ministries, yung local government units, including the forces of the MILF. So pinag, uh, mm -hmm. sinama na natin yan sa pag-distribute ng relief dun sa mga communities na hindi na-access ng government. Uh, so talaga hong pumasok tayo dun sa level ng communities na. 
Okay. So thank you so much, Minister Najib, for all of those insights. I'm sure uh, you mga BTA um, people who are watching the transition process are um, really keen to see all of the changes that you've promised. And um, best of luck to the BTA for the coming year. Salamat, Pia. Thank you very much.